Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger. Welcome back to our Kafir Middle East update. Uh, these are longer for obvious reasons. As we look back over the last week, it's October 30th today. Uh, but just a reminder, the PDF notes, there, there's 15 to 18 different slides. You're gonna wanna make sure you grab that. And you can get that on our website at holygroundexplorations.com or it should just be a link on the YouTube page. Um, with that, let's jump in. We start with our news bites. Uh, no big surprise here, but Israel stopped issuing visas to the UN officials on Wednesday. Again, the UN and Israel not held in high regard, um, usually referred to as the United Nothings. But especially after the UN Secretary General Antonio uh, Guterres made the comment, appeared to say that Hamas's um, murderous actions on October 7th was due or brought on primarily because of the Israeli occupation. That was a mistake. Um, the total number of Israeli citizens that have been displaced, both from the north and the south, uh, 125,000. Let that number sink in. And the recommendation of the Ministry of Defense uh, is that they'll stay in hotels and guest homes uh, at least to the uh, end of the year. Uh, Bibi's been saying on and on again that... The, this is going to take some time. And so this is not one of those two weeks incursions into Gaza that's just been a spin cycle over the last years. Um, don't neglect um, this point. I, and, and again, I'm not uh, Islamophobia at all, but uh, remember how many families were slaughtered in the kibbutzes? Uh, many of those that were slaughtered were slaughtered at the hands and the work of people they thought of as friends. Uh, Israel opened the borders to allow Gazans, Palestinians to come across to work. And we found out that many of them... Um, the work they did was basically spy out the land and to give infrastructure, give instruction to the marauders as far as uh, where the safe rooms are, which homes had um, dogs, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, you know, the bottom line, and we've said it, is that there is a legacy of hate. And with all the teachings in the, in the Quran, um, you don't know when they sort of kick in because these were all friends are thought to be friends. And yet the activities that transpires has come because of the brainwashing from the crib in a sense. And so that has not changed to this day, which is one of the reasons that Israel is in this state of fear and tension because of the effects of terrorism. They don't know who to trust. You can catch my drift on that. <clears throat> um, Hamas uh, remains strong, no matter what you might be hearing. They, they may claim they're running out of fuel and water, etc. They're not running out of rockets. And the amount of soldiers that are thought to be embedded in these terror structures are upwards to 30,000. So um, empathy, support for Israel in this day and age and this day and time is dissipating, as you probably know. Um, massive protests worldwide and that pendulum is swinging the other directions, but don't be fooled. Uh, don't let propaganda shape your uh, convictions as to what needs to be done. Uh, this evil that has taken place must, must 
be rooted out and pulled out by the roots. Hamas is ISIS and cannot exist anymore. Or it will be an open door for, and I can't imagine it, but open door for something, events that will even be worse than what transpired on October 7th. Um, interestingly enough, this is still our news bites. Uh, Kamala Harris, our vice president, uh, told 60 Minutes last night that the, uh, the U.S. will not send troops to Gaza or Israel. We, her quote, we have absolutely no intentions, nor do we have any plans to send combat troops into Israel or the Gaza period. Um, I'll just let that one go for now. All right, the uh, articles for this week, Price of Support. Uh, this is from our friend Amir Safati. And if you don't uh, have Telegram as an app, make sure you get it and make sure you find Amir because that's the best source of information that you're going to be able to get regarding what's taken place truly in Israel, in the Middle East regarding all of this. But he warns, and I think it's, we need to hear this because as I just mentioned, that pendulum swinging the other direction, anti-Semitism is on the rise and it's gonna go even higher. And Christians who support Israel, there will be a cost to pay. You will be attacked as well. But our job, watchmen on the walls, are to speak out, to stand up, to educate and form the world. And don't ever expect, however, in so doing, that you'll be loved or rewarded because there's a lot of evil out there. And there's a lot of demonic activity. And anti-Semitism is insidious and will continue to rise because of the man of lawlessness that seems to be ruling behind the scenes even at this day. Um, Turkey, Aragon, uh, interesting that uh, we're fortunate because we had an amazing time in Turkey as we visited the western part of Turkey and we were at um, Izmir, which is Smyrna, and then from Izmir, we went to Ephesus and then Pergamos, and like I said, had an amazing time. We left a few days before October 7th, and the bottom line is that the pendulum has radically swung. Uh, Turkey's military is one of the largest in the region. It's on par with Egypt and Iran. It's considered one of the top 15 militaries in the world, according to most military magazines. And Turkey's president, um, Aragon, delivered a speech, and there were over 100,000 people in the, in, in the outdoor arenas. And he basically, it was an anti-Israel rally in which he told the attendees that Israel was responsible for the war crimes and he framed Hamas as so-called freedom fighters. But he went even further than that. He suggested that Turkey may need to intervene into Gaza, saying, quote, Turkey can come at night unexpectedly and this was uh, to the crowd, it was uh, a, a static reception of this news. Hundreds of thousands of attendees begin to chant Turkish military into Gaza, Turkish military into Gaza. And needless to say, Turkey is one of the, the you know, the part of that coalition of Ezekiel 38 and 39. I don't think this is it at this point in time, but Bibi had just met a few months ago with Erdogan. It seemed like they had patched things up and Erdogan was actually coming to visit Israel. That ain't happening. Um, the deceit of Hamas. And, and again, we're dealing with propaganda, fake news, social media. 
Um, propaganda is an effective weapon, especially during war times. False flags, false information. Uh, the discerning ear needs to be wise in what they're hearing. You need to find those sources that you can rely on of truth. Um, the bottom line, please, it is a one plus one equals two scenario. There is no moral equivalence between what Hamas's behavior was on October 7th and Israel's military response. Uh, only the naive believe that promises made by evil men, and really, and, and uh, I don't even have words to express what's coming out with the horrific behaviors that took place. But to equate these two, and then even worse, to blame Israel and say it's because of you that you force these people to become. Uh, demonic slaves and animalistic behaviors. It's ridiculous. And now we're facing that pendulum swinging on our campuses or whatever. But keep this in mind. Hamas is now going to be sending scripted videos from those that have been abducted. Don't even for a moment think that these people are speaking freely. And of course, they're going to criticize Netanyahu and the government and plead for a ceasefire. It's coming. It will come in spades. It's propaganda. Don't fall for it. Israel must defeat Hamas, period. Um, again, we're seeing this movement that's now called Globalize the Intifada. Uh, for years, this has been the rallying cry on the fringes of college campuses and those that are sort of the furthest on the left. Um, but now we're seeing large scale masses, uh, large scale marches through London. We see the horrific uh, situation where they wanted to lynch Israelis and the uh, Russian airports. And again, Cornell University, top American educational institutes, um, a Jewish dining hall was uh, put on lockdown because of threats and Jewish students had to hide because of those death threats. This is what I'm talking about. This is what's going on. This is that pendulum radically swinging back the other direction. And then cause for concern okay we we've reported over this the the differences in age gaps and generations okay those over 65 years of age with all of this that's going on have sided with israel the percentages it's like 95 percent to five percent that's 65 and older what the cause of concern is is what does that percentage look like for the 18 to 24 year olds? The support for Israel over Hamas is by the thinnest of margins, 52% to 48%. That's why there's such concern. And then asked uh, the most basic facts about the controversy today, many of those young people fail the test. When asked if Hamas killed 1,400 innocent civilians, listen to this, 32% of this college age group said it never happened. Deceit, propaganda, that's the name of the game. Um, Bibi's addressed the country. He's let them know that they're in the second phase of this war. Uh, his, he's calm. There, there's, a, there's a unified government in place with, with Bibi and Benny Gantz. And uh, it seems to be a strong coalition at this time. And uh, Bibi's message was it's 
time to unite for the one goal. We need to storm forward to victory. And then he quotes Isaiah. He says, with shared voices, with deep faith in the justice of our cause and the eternity of Israel, we will realize the prophecy of Isaiah 60, 18, quote, violence shall no more be heard in your land desolation nor destruction within your borders but you shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise may that be so um a message again you, you know in this i have not put some of the most graphic videos that are out there circulating as far as the atrocities of what hamas uh, did to those 1,400 people that were butchered and uh, killed in the southern portion of Israel. But this message uh, is, I think it's slide number 10. Uh, this note was found on one of the Hamas terrorists, uh, quote, because again, when we get this poor, poor Hamas, poor Palestinians, Israel forced you to do this. Listen to what the note says. Know that this enemy of yours, the Jewish people, the Israelis, is a disease that has no cure other than beheading and extracting the hearts and their livers. This was the message that was found on one of the terrorists. No words. And then... Um, Right when you want to think, well, it's just that radical um, Hamas extremist jihadist sort of things. It's interesting that from the Israelis that survived in the Starot area in Oz and Benari, um, they basically have said the second wave of Arabs who came into the country were just as cruel as the terrorists in the first wave. So, so the guys with the um, army uniforms on and the green headbands, uh, what they did was atrocious. We know that. But again, as the, the walls and the gates were open, just regular civilians from Gaza came through. And again, the reports, they were just as cruel as the terrorists of the first wave. Again, it's that legacy of hate. Well, that's essentially it for this week. I have some photos for you to look at. Again, back to make sure you grab that PowerPoint because the war now, this second phase, is really going to be about the tunnels, the infrastructure, the destroying of these tunnels where no doubt the abductees are, but where the leadership of Hamas resides. And this photo in uh, slide 12 will give you some idea and this is just where Israel is right now in this northern section and all of those uh, white lines are the city below the cities in a sense these terror tunnels and then no big surprise that Hamas's headquarters and depots for their weapons and their soldiers they put underneath the largest hospital in Gaza. And you can see photos of that, the Shifa Hospital. And the red areas are below ground. It's the infrastructure of the headquarters of Hamas. And then on a lighter side, only in Israel, uh, you see this couple getting married, Mazel Tov. To them, uh, again, in Israel, both men and women serve right out of high school. If you're, uh, if you're a man, you're going to serve three years. If you're a woman, you're going to serve two years. And uh, the unity that's taking place, no one, no country, no entity circles the wagons um, and, and patches up the gaps uh, than the nation of Israel when under duress and at war. They know that if they don't stand together, they just simply don't exist. Um,
couple things you've seen uh, in this next slide. It's just a reminder, the next two slides actually. Um, these uh, flyers have been put up really literally around the world. And um, I think this one is in the Netherlands. And uh, the following slide you're gonna see is my refrigerator. And I wanna encourage you, you can go online and you can print these up. There are now 200 and they're saying 39 people that are probably in those terror tunnels. Over 30 of them children under the age of 16. Uh, many of them over the age of 70. But this is just a reminder that we can never forget. And again, print up a handful of these. And you're not going to get all 239, but you can, you, you, you can take some time, put it in the place like refrigerators where you're going to see it. I can't imagine what it would be like for a four-year-old without mom and dad there being in one of these terror tunnels. But it's just the power of prayer. Our God, that he might give peace security, shalom, that they would sense his presence with them. It's just a reminder, my friends, to pray. And then uh, upcoming Holy Ground Israel tours. We're going if the doors are open and there's limited seats still available for our February 21st through March 1st trip to Israel. I'm praying that the doors would be open but again, what a great time to go and stand with Israel. Pray about joining us. And then if you're in this neck of the woods, um, we are hosting, we're calling, we're going to bring Israel to North Idaho. We're going to host Aaron Schust and uh, Joshua Aaron for an evening of worship. No doubt prayer will be taking place for Israel. Uh, Joshua Aaron, I've seen him do clips for The Chosen, uh, the Christmas special there, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. He is an amazing musician out of the Galilee, and we're fortunate to be able to host this. And so if you're in our area, get your tickets. And if you just want to support this, um, please go to our website and make a contribution as we host this event. So that's it for uh, this week. Uh, unless, uh, again, I'm not necessarily just doing these on a weekly basis. As, as situations arise, we'll do more and more of these Middle East updates because I truly believe we need to find sources that we can find reliable in the age in which we're living. So I hope that would be holy ground for you as well. So God bless you, shalom, and remember to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen.